Everybody knows the old fable of the goose that laid golden eggs. It's a story as old as time itself, the tale of a goose that lays golden eggs and the greedy farmers who kill it in order to get the gold that they thought was inside. For Spotify, Joe Rogan is that golden goose. And almost every day, he lays a golden egg in the form of an episode of the Joe Rogan Experience podcast. Rogan's podcast is incredibly popular, one of the most popular to ever exist. Each episode of the podcast reaches millions of viewers and makes Spotify untold millions of dollars from ad buys on his show. The CPM, or cost per thousand viewers, is somewhere around $60. By comparison, the average CPM for YouTube ads is only around $2. And unlike most people who host their music and podcasts on Spotify who make mere fractions of pennies for every stream, Spotify's exclusive deal with Rogan was worth $100 million. And it's clear as daylight that the $100 million deal was more than a worthy investment. Rogan's platform is unimaginably huge, and with a reach as huge as his, he has an enormous influence over the beliefs and worldviews of an incredibly dedicated fan base. Now, I want to make it clear, I'm not so deluded as to believe that I, Max Crimson Ender, a channel with roughly 940 subscribers, can take down a media titan like Rogan. But what I do know is that I can discuss why some of the viewpoints he and his guests have promoted on the show are dangerous, and maybe even talk a little shit about the men along the way. I mean, come on, Joe, what's a little ribbing between men like us, huh? I mean, how can a man who looks like this and pumps himself full of HGH be insecure about himself or his masculinity, right? I'm also not trying to position myself as the arbiter of the truth. But I will say that everything that I say in this video is backed by science and evidence. Well, Rogan has decided to take ivermectin when he came down with COVID. This isn't about politics. That's not what I'm here to discuss. This is not a swamp I want to wade through, even though at this point in the video I've already got myself stuck way deep in the mud. I could sit here for hours and hours breaking down and deconstructing every single one of Joe Rogan's political beliefs, but it would be about as productive as our current 50-50 split Senate. And although I've made videos about political subjects in the past, Crimson Thunder is not, and never will be, a political channel. What I'm really here to talk about is the misinformation Rogan and his guests have no problem spreading on the podcast. Facts and science, unlike politics, are objective. Throughout the pandemic, Rogan has been no stranger to peddling misinformation about COVID-19 vaccines. I want to make it clear, the evidence that proves COVID-19 vaccination is safe and effective is overwhelming. No doctor or scientist worth their salt would say otherwise. I am fully vaccinated and boosted because I know it's the best thing I can do for, to protect myself, my family, and my community. Last year, Rogan said on a show that if you're young and you're healthy, you probably don't need the vaccine and shouldn't worry about getting sick. I don't think I have to explain why this is wrong, but the pandemic has really shown how many people among us are absolute dumbasses, so I'll explain it anyway. Kids can still get COVID. Although it's not likely as in the older population, kids can still get severely ill and even die. Got any kids? How are they? My kids are dead. They can spread the virus to somebody who is more vulnerable. And the more people who aren't vaccinated, the more people in whom a virus can mutate and a new variant can arise. He was promptly called out on this and retracted his statement shortly thereafter. But if it really ended at that, him saying something stupid and uneducated and then walking back his statement after he was called out, we wouldn't be sitting here having this discussion. Like a middle school relationship, everybody would make a big fuss about it for a couple days before forgetting about it and moving on with their lives. In September of 2021, the man himself got the virus, and he treated himself using the drug Ivermectin. Ivermectin is a horse dewormer, an anti-parasite medication. Last time I checked, Rogan is certainly not a horse, and I can at least hope he doesn't have worms. But with his weird diets, you never really know. You know, it's fascinating to me that there are some people out there who will refuse to take a vaccine that has been rigorously tested and proven to work out of fear of authority, resentment of quote-unquote big pharma, or just simple delusions. But they will self-medicate with random drugs not at all proven to have any benefit just because somebody on the internet told them to. Recently, the whole controversy around Rogan spreading misinformation has reached a boiling point, and it was primarily because of two infamous guests Rogan decided to host on his podcast. Jordan Peterson and Robert Malone. Jordan Peterson is greatly infamous. He needs little introduction. His two most distinctive characteristics are that his regular speaking voice sounds like a bad Kermit the Frog impression. So, so this is why this thing that I've said to people has become this crazy internet meme, but that's to clean up your room. And his ability to win audiences over by speaking with confidence about subjects he has absolutely no knowledge about. Videos about him also won't get out on my fucking recommended page. I want to stop seeing this man everywhere. In the episode, Peterson went on to discuss climate change. Something, as a clinical psychologist, he is definitely qualified to talk about to an audience of millions of people while positioning himself as an expert. He would go on to pretty much deny the existence of the idea of climate altogether, saying that climate basically means everything, and that the future climate models scientists put out aren't reliable because you can't include everything in your model. 
Climate modeling as a topic is way too complicated for me to dive into in this video because the program scientists use are written by people orders of magnitude smarter than I am and have millions of lines of code that not even my epic PC can run. But I will say that climate models use things like the first law of thermodynamics, the Stefan Boltzmann law, and a bunch of other equations I don't understand because I'm in college and I was learning stuff like the vertical line test for the third fucking time. This shit's too advanced for my tiny brain. But the stick that really broke the camel's back and led to the controversy over Rogan really boiling over was when he hosted Dr. Robert Malone on his show. Dr. Malone has become quite a big anti-vaccine nutcase, having been banned from Twitter for violating its COVID-19 misinformation policies. Yes, the perfect man to give a platform with a reach of millions of people. Great work, Joe. Malone was actually involved in a lot of the really early research and development of mRNA vaccines, but has since become one of its greatest detractors. He sent bogus papers to the FDA claiming that the spike proteins created by the COVID-19 vaccine were toxic, and attributed people's willingness to get the vaccine to a phenomenon called mass formation psychosis, a sort of mass-scale social brainwashing effort which he compared to the rise of Hitler and the Nazi party in 1930s Germany. What the actual fuck? Is this man brain damaged? Does he have mass formation psychosis? The worst part about all of this is that he actually has an MD, which gives his bullshit claims more credibility among anti-vaxxers. And anti-vaxxers spreading misinformation online is dangerous enough. But to echo the words of one wise Chuck McGill, an anti-vaxxer with a medical degree is like a chip with a machine gun. I've been binge watching Better Call Saul lately, can you tell? It's a good show, highly recommend it. What were you talking about? Oh yeah, Joe Rogan and misinformation. Malone's appearance on the Joe Rogan experience led to thousands of scientists signing an open letter to Spotify urging them to begin cracking down on COVID-19 misinformation, calling it a quote, sociological issue of devastating proportions. It led to a number of musicians pulling their works from Spotify, probably losing something on the order of two to five dollars. In response, Rogan issued one of the most half-baked apologies since whatever that excuse of an apology video that Gus Johnson put out a couple weeks ago was. He apologized if he pissed people off and promised to do better in the future. I would like to take him at face value, but his track records does not inspire much confidence in me that he will improve. And on Spotify's end, they've stated that they're going to start putting content warnings on podcasts that discuss subjects like COVID-19 misinformation. Personally, I don't feel like a content warning is enough to solve the problems at hand. It's like putting a band-aid on a tibial fracture. It doesn't do much, but at least you can say that you did something. At this point, you may be asking, why did I make this video in the first place? It's because I believe that having a platform as big as he has, it's Joe Rogan's moral obligation to avoid spreading misinformation wherever possible. The Joe Rogan experience pulls in an average of 11 million views an episode, and according to Nielsen ratings and Spotify's own data, that means he has a larger platform than CNN, Rachel Maddow, Tucker Carlson, and Sean Hannity combined. Rogan isn't some sort of indie voice speaking truth to power that's being suppressed. He's about as mainstream as it gets. Misinformation can kill. And when a creator fails to follow through on not spreading misinformation, it is the imperative of the platform to enforce the rules for the safety of its listeners. But it all feels like what Spotify is doing is enabling him. They spent a hundred million dollars on securing the exclusive rights to his podcast. A hundred million! Do you think they're gonna throw away all that money if they don't have to? Hell no! They did pull some episodes of his show where he did use the N-word, but none where he actually shared the COVID-19 misinformation we're talking about. Interesting. Feels kind of performative, doesn't it? Joe Rogan is Spotify's golden goose, and they will do everything in their power to avoid slaughtering their golden goose. Because once the goose is dead, that's it. No more golden eggs. No more million dollar ad buys. Nothing. Please, Spotify, put your foot down when it comes to misinformation. And Joe Rogan, just please just be responsible with who you have on your show. The world will be better for it. Thanks for watching.